In a few moments, 10 of these people will unleash an imaginative power they never even knew they possessed as they enter the hypnotic world of Paul McKenna. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paul McKenna. Thank you very much. Good evening and welcome to the hypnotic world. People often ask me about the responsibility that goes with being a hypnotist. Well, of course, rule number one is never to use hypnosis for your own personal ends. In fact, I was making that very point this morning in bed to Demi Moore and Liz Hurley. <laughs> I'm about to select ten people from the volunteers over here and then, through the power of hypnosis, turn them into the stars of tonight's show. I can remember going under and it was a very warm feeling. Paul McKenna's voice was the centre of attention, it was the focus. It just led me and pointed me in the right directions and I didn't really want to deviate from what he was saying. You can hear all the other things that are going on in the background, but they become kind of meaningless. And the only thing you're focusing on is his voice. You could hear people laughing, talking in the background, but slowly everything died out of the way and Paul's voice came over everything. Paul is the centre of focus. Everybody else isn't there, or well, not that I was aware, just Paul and I were there and that was it. Here then are the ten I believe will be the most imaginative from our studio audience. For the next hour we're all going to be fascinated and entertained by the creativity of their unconscious minds. So let's begin. And let's start by getting to know Paul's selection of subjects tonight. For his first routine, Paul teamed Darren Francis, who's an electrician from London, with Marianne Kefalas. She's a house-proud housewife from New Southgate. And alongside Marianne, to complete the team, there's Paul MacDonald, an actor who, with no script and no rehearsal, found that hypnosis lifted the curtain on his imagination. Would you say that you're all reasonably house-proud people? Yes. Yeah, yes. so you wouldn't have somebody around if the place was a mess? No. No, totally. <laughs> no, <really. laughs> Sleep. Because... When you all wake up in the next few moments, you'll believe that you are panellists on a TV show that tries to find out the identity of a mystery homeowner. You two will both believe that it's the most disgusting, awful place that you've ever seen, and you'll want to deride it and criticise it. <laughs> you, on the other hand, Paul, will suddenly realise that it's your home that we're looking at, and you'll do your best to try and defend it. However, should the camera crew break anything, You'll immediately announce that it's your home and you'll demand that they leave. Ready? Eyes open, wide awake. <laughs> Hello, good evening and welcome to another edition of Through the Cat Flap, the show where our panellists have to guess who owns a particular property from the way loud gross voice sneers at their curtains. <laughs> So, panellists, are you ready to guess whose property it is? Mm. Then let's go through the cat flap. Now, no sort of person would live in a place like this. Obviously, the food plays an important part in the life of this mystery homeowner. Even if washing up does not. He obviously spares no expense on healthy eating. <laughs> And the fast food surely shows he lives in the fast lane. <laughs> now, what culinary delights do these designer units hold? <laughs> what sort of person would live in a hovel like this? Can anyone smell gas? <laughs> so, let's find out what sort of ideas you have. Darren, uh, what sort of a person? Someone actually lives in there? Yes. It looks like one of the setups for one of the Harry Enfield sketches. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. No one can live in that. No. 
I mean, you know, it might have been left derelict for a while, but that's not someone's home, definitely not. What about you, Marianne? Um, what sort of a person lives in a place like that? I don't know, but it's disgusting. <laughs> so, I mean, how would you describe the property? <laughs> I'd knock it down. <laughs> Paul, what do you think? Um... <laughs> <sighs> I'd say it's the house of someone who's fairly independent, busy, not much time for housework. <laughs> Someone who's always on the go. Yeah, so somebody who's a bit of a jet setter, possibly? Yeah, maybe someone artistic or something. Yes. Maybe some, like, um, Damon from Blur, something like that. Yes, right. Yeah. Would, would you agree with that, Darren? No, no. I mean, everyone's got five seconds in a day. I mean, a tramp would keep his house looking better than that. <laughs> right, well, let's have a look at some more clues, then. Now, let's move <laughs> to our mystery homeowner's sleeping quarters. The Japanese food hall. The priceless art collection. <laughs> now, these <laughs> things, this is the master bedroom. But, master of what? <laughs> Perhaps, he's expecting company. <laughs> then again, maybe not. <laughs> What sort of pervert would live in a home like this? Well, what are your thoughts, Darren? Who would live in a place like that? Oh, uh, now you're making it complicated now. I mean, that bedroom looks used. It definitely looks used. <laughs> <laughs> you can see why they got that doll there. I mean, you certainly ain't going to bring a real woman into that place. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Marianne? Can you think of somebody famous who might live in a place like that? You? <laughs> What an unfortunate statement. <laughs> Have you ever done the funky chicken? <laughs> Only joking. Seriously, though, um, Paul, what do you make of the person who lives there? I think... I think you're overstating the case quite a bit, really. I mean, <laughs> I'd say it's probably someone who just likes a bit of fun, maybe. Someone who likes a bit of fun. What fun. sort of person? Different, unusual, um, again, probably artistic. Someone who likes to express themselves in a, a different way, perhaps. Would you agree with that, Darren? No, there's no art in that. <laughs> it's obviously someone who's got no life, you could say. <laughs> Is that right, Paul? I don't think I could really agree with that. I mean... So, so you, for example, your house would be very different to that, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> People are entitled to live their lives the way they want to. And, if, I mean, if that's the way someone who doesn't have, you know, the time to be house-proud wants to have their house, I think that's perfectly fine. OK, well, let's go back again for one last clue, then, shall we? Now, the lounge suggests that the homeowner has his own unique idea of good taste, because the only piece of any value is up here, almost out of sight and almost out of reach! <laughs> Can we, can we stop the show right now, please? What's, what's can we the turn problem? the cameras off? Please? What's the problem, Paul? Personal reasons. I just... No, I do not want to go on with the you're show You're amongst now. friends. You can tell us. What's the reason? OK, it's my <laughs> house! OK! <laughs> Why didn't you say so before? Would you have? <laughs> you're obviously a little bit shocked. Are you sitting here right next to us? <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how to can, can, we just, can we just oh leave everything alone? Can we just turn everything off, finish well, the show, just leave we, everything? Well, we would, but I'm afraid we have to go back there. There's some sort of problem. Are you sure you can't smell gas? <laughs> oh, my God! <laughs> Part of you is actually aware of the, the whole scenario, the whole circumstance of what's going on. Uh, and yet, at the same time, another part of you is, is totally wrapped up in the whole thing. Addy Maffey is an athlete turned personal trainer, but no amount of training could have prepared him for what happened when he met Paul. Addy, are you the kind of guy that likes being told what to do? No. 
So a life in the army wouldn't suit you then? I don't think so, sir. <laughs> Sleep. But when you wake up, though, you will be the army's newest and keenest recruit. Your sergeant major eats new recruits like you for breakfast. He's a bit of a monster. So unless you want to end up in the glass house, you'll want to impress him. However, you'll find that when you awaken, I have become completely invisible to you. You can't see me, but you can see things that I move around. Ready? Eyes open. Why do we? Right, left, right, left, right. Come here. Come here, Ned. How are you? I'm um, fine, sir. Good. Face the front. That's right. Thanks, sir. Now then, what's your name? My name's Addy, sir. Shut up! Fine, sir. Stand up straight, eyes front, yes, your shoulders back, yes, your chest out, yes, stomach in. Yes, Stop fidgeting, you miserable excuse for a human being! I'm trying, sir. You're trying, yes, I know. Now then, smart yourself up. I was going to say get an air cut, but that's a waste of time, isn't it? <laughs> Stop laughing! Fine, sir. You make a lousy soldier. What are you going to be? I'm the best soldier in the army, sir. No, you're not. You're going to be a lousy soldier. What are you going to be? I'm going to be a lousy soldier, sir. Not in my army, you're not. What are you going to be? I'm going to be. I don't know, sir. Shut up, are you speaking to me? <laughs> you're pathetic and useless. What are you? I'm not pathetic. I just am pathetic and useless, sir. Right, right. <laughs> now then. I'm going to enjoy training you. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. So let's start with a basic discipline, shall we? Yes, sir. When a superior officer walks into the room, what do you do? <laughs> no, you don't! <laughs> you salute him smartly, don't you? Yes, sir. And how do you salute him? Misdemeanor <laughs> <laughs> like that, lad, and it'll be a week in the glass house. Do you understand? It's yes, sir. Right? Yes, yes, sir! sir. At least I used to call it a mummy, because mummies aren't allowed in a glass house, do you understand? Except for my mummy. Your mummy, sir? My mummy, yes. yes sir. And you'll leave her alone because she's a respectable woman. Yes, sir. Why will you leave her alone? Because she's got a face like a pig's backside. Right! Two girls in the glass house, Sergeant. It wasn't me, sir! Shut up when I'm speaking to you! Sergeant! It wasn't me, sir! I said, shut up! <laughs> shut up! No permission to speak, lad, none at all! I'll tell you when you speak, I'll tell you when to breathe, I'll even tell you when to... You know what? Shut up! Yes, sir. Right. Now then, let's have a look at your kit, shall we? Get your kit out, that's it. Lay it all out, let's have a look at it. Smartly, lad, smartly, move now, move, move. That's it, lay it all out nice and neat, that's it, lovely. <laughs> OK, very smart indeed. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, what have we got here? Get your hands up, stand up straight. Move over there, stand at attention. Look at me. That's it. Now then, what have we got here, eh? It's not mine, sir! Not mine! It's Jonesy, sir! Jonesy's, is it? What do you think this is, battle dress? I think his mother gave it to him, sir. You think his mother gave it to him, do you? <laughs> I'm not trying to be the best soldier I can be, sir. Yes, in this you certainly will be. Now then, <laughs> what's this, eh? That's Jonesy's as well, sir! What is Jones, His eh? mother sent him a parcel, sir. He must have left it in my kit, sir. How unfortunate for Jones, eh? Now then, last but not least, we have these little twinkle toes. They're not mine, sir. They're not. Are they Joneses? I'll kill them. Pardon? <laughs> are these Joneses as well? They must be, sir. I've never seen them before in my life, sir. Are you sure? What size shoes do you take? Uh, 15, sir. Well, these are 15s. They must be yours. Now then, listen. <laughs> this is regimental kit. Yes, sir. Now then, and what have we got here? Look at the state of these. They're dirty, they're filthy, they're horrible! I've never seen them before, sir. But These are your judges, believe you me, son. These are yours. Yes, sir. Pop hold of them. Get hold of them. And I want to see my face in them. Come here! Now then, there's a cloth here, and you will use it for polishing them boots. And I want to see my face in them. What do I want to see? Your face in them! My face in them, your not face yours. Your face in them, sir, yes. Or Jones's, my face. Yes, sir. Now get polishing. Come on, jump to it. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> right, stop polishing. Put them down, put them down, lad. Put them down over there, lad. Not there. There. That's it. Now, come here to me. Look at me. Now then. I hope I can see my face in those boots now. <laughs> Do you think I can see my face in those boots? It's a bit dark in those boots, sir. A bit dark in those boots. Bit of a comedian as well, are we, eh? No, sir. Go and get her. Bring them over here. <laughs> You don't like me, do you?
Yes, I love you, sir. Good. <laughs> because now I'm going to give you one last chance. You understand? Yes, sir. You like animals? <coughs> yes, sir. Good. Bring on the regimental mascot! Come over here with me. Over here, over here. Hand it here. Beside me. That's it. Now then, this is Killer, the regimental mascot. And this, give me that lad, is a brush. Now, if you'll be so kind, I'd like you to brush Killer so that she's ready for regimental parade. I'd like to add that myself and the entire regiment are very fond of Killer. So I am too, sir. Are you really? Yes, sir. Now then, are you ready to groom? Yes, sir. Right, groom away! <laughs> Hurry up, lad. Come on. That's it. That's it. Get her nicely brushed. Right, come over here, lad. Face me. That's it. Stand still. Back off. Back, 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 back. Not that way, lad. Back, back, back. Have you done a very good job on it? You've given her a good brush, have you? Very good, sir. Right, turn round. What have you done with her, eh? I can't really explain it. It's just sort of I turn around one minute and I put my kit out. Next minute I turn around, there was pyjamas and slippers. And I just had to think of something where they came from because they weren't mine. So that's where Jones sort of popped into my head. And I said, they were Jones's. And he, he was the one who put them there. And I'll kill him. And you know, I was just trying to find a reason why those things were there. And it wasn't me that was doing it, because I am a pretty good soldier. And it was somebody else's fault. It was not my fault. You've seen that hypnosis has great entertainment value, but tonight we're going to go beyond that. I want to show you some of the wonderful practical ways it can enhance people's lives. Phobias are irrational, excessive fears. They make life hell for thousands of people, including Bobby Davro, who suffered from arachnophobia, the uncontrollable fear of spiders. When did you first get frightened of spiders? Well, I remember it vividly because um, I, was, I had a little um, tricycle and the street that I was brought up in had lots of those hedgerows. Do you remember the old hedgerows you used to get? Don't get many of those now. And um, I was trying, going along on my trike, you know, going sort of turning on two wheels, and I spun around the corner, I lost control of the trike, and I went into a hedgerow. And as I went in, it sort of it shot me a bit, and I must have hit one of those spider webs, and one of those sort of hardback spiders, you know, the ones that sort of sit there in the middle of the webs, just went on my face. And that was it, I freaked out. <sighs> It was like alien. Yeah, it was like growing inside of me. Yeah. <laughs> but it, that was, the, the, that was the, the point then I think I got very scared of spiders. And it stayed with me, f well, always. How do you feel about tarantulas, though? Um, well, I, I don't mind them too much, because you don't get those in the bath, do you? Oh, we've got one but, here. Uh, as I can see, yeah, in the tarantula tin. Now, see, I'm all right if we... Ooh. Oh! He's, oh, he's coming out. Oh, no, I'm off. I can't act that. <laughs> Let's begin the hypnosis then. If you just close your eyes, relax, and concentrate on a time when you felt good. As Bobby listens to Paul's voice, powerful changes are happening in his unconscious mind. The negative charge of his childhood experience is removed. So although he still remembers it, the effect of the fear has gone. Hypnosis is the fastest and most effective psychological technique for completely removing phobias. Wide awake. Feel good? Yeah. I feel good, yeah. Feel different about spiders? Yeah, a bit more confident about it, yeah. How do you feel now? Well, I can honestly say that I'm not as scared. Um, obviously, static. I'd like to just start by um, stroking the leg. Yeah, definitely not as scared. It's really weird. Ooh, there she is, yeah. What a beautiful little right. creature. So you want to hold her? Yeah. See, that's an incredible feeling for me to actually see the spider moving on me. I'm not scared at all. I'd like to let her go up my arm. Will she go up my arm? Oh, yeah. So would you say you've overcome your fear of spiders now? Yeah. I mean, to me, this is not hard now. I mean, I'm not sweating. I'm not feeling those anxiety pangs that I had across my shoulders. For me, this is a wonderful feeling to be able to do this. Look at that. Look. You're a miracle man, Mr. McKenna. <laughs> what clever dick he is. <laughs> I feel fabulous. Now back to our entranced Imagineers, and tonight's ten include Deptford shop owner Steve Durnford. We're nearly at the end of part one, ladies and gentlemen, but 
when I awake you in the next few moments and you hear me say the words after the break, you'll feel a compulsion to rush to the front of the stage and beg and plead with the audience watching to stay watching because you'll think that if they don't, something terrible will happen. Ready? Eyes open, wide awake. Well, that's just about all we've got time for in part one, but stay tuned because we'll be back after the break. Please don't <laughs> hypnotic happenings continue with medical student Duncan Parker who volunteered for the McKenna treatment as did Ashkel Ibrahim from Palmer's Green who's studying marketing and personnel and who under hypnosis proved to be a good sport do you all like a serious debate yeah. yeah? Sleep. Well, you're about to have one because you'll all believe that you've been invited onto a sporting discussion programme on television. You, Paul, will believe that you're a top Premier Division footballer. You're very cocky because you've just been signed for £10 million. You want to boast about your abilities and you'll always try and turn the subject back to yourself and how brilliant you are. <laughs> you, Duncan, will believe that you are the world tiddlywinks champion. <laughs> You'll think that tiddlywinks is the greatest sport in the world. No matter what happens, you'll try and get the subject back to tiddlywinks. You, Ashkel, will be a sports correspondent. You'll believe that sport is riddled with corruption, match-fixing, bribery, because you'll believe, and in fact, you'll get quite outrageous and surreal in the accusations that you make, that it's full of shysters. Ready? <laughs> Eyes open, wide awake. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Sporting Questions, the topical sports debate programme which gets to the bottom of all the sporting issues currently in the news. And with me tonight, we have the footballer who Manchester United have just paid a staggering £10 million for. That's Paul. Evening. Next, we have the man who's been the world's Tiddlewicks champion for the past three years, Duncan. And finally, we have the woman who always gets to the root of the crucial issues. It's the correspondent for the Sporting <laughs> Enquirer, Ashkel. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your panel. <laughs> right, straight, straight into the questions, and uh, we have a first question from a gentleman there. Yes, sir? Yes, uh, I'd just like to ask Paul um, what he thinks of uh, other players in the game, uh, such as Paul Gascoigne. Well, Paul Gascoigne went for, what was it, uh, four, four and a half million to Glasgow Rangers? I went for 10 million to Manchester United, and that tells you something right away. But Duncan, don't you think, um, comparing it with Tiddlywinks, I mean, that is inflated transfer fees, surely? Yeah, I would have to say that, especially with the new uh, sponsorship deal from Nike and Reebok that uh, Tiddlywinks is <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. You have that now in Tiddlywinks? Yes. OK, Ashkel, uh, looking at, at both those sports, I mean, and how do you see Tiddlywinks compared with soccer? Tiddlywinks is yes. a sport, yeah. Yes. <laughs> He, yeah. you know, he is a bigot, a liar, <laughs> cheat, yeah, for all footballers are, yeah. You know what they do? They have, they have tunnels under the pitches, yeah. They're well, dug the by rabbits, yeah. <laughs> and what they do when, when they kick the ball, yeah, they've got trap doors and they go underneath and they think, yeah, we've done a superb goal, but it's... Uh, yeah, but obviously, this is a woman who knows absolutely nothing about football. Yeah, well, you get I mean, Salem Hussain why to come with a helicopter. Here, and look, to be honest, right, <laughs> I mean, th this is ridiculous. I've got someone who plays tiddlywinks. And what's wrong with that? A sporting correspondent for something I've never heard Listen, of. Listen, no, this, 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 this is a joke. for you is a joke. I am worth every single penny that was paid for me. Yeah. Every single... Well, actually, we, we have uh, another question uh, from, from our audience, a young lady there. Yes. Yeah, Paul, um, I'd like to know how you can justify your transfer fee. I mean, do you really think you're worth £10 million? No. Well, look at the goals. <laughs> it's, it's all about the goals, isn't it? At the end of the day, I'll be scoring goals for Manchester yeah, but United. It's not you They'll be winning the Premiership. Tiddly and Tiddly 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 Tiddly
Surely there'd be the same amount of huge money being handed over in the sporting world of tiddlywinks. Suck. Yeah. <laughs> Duncan, do you think you can see the league whereby there'll be huge transfer fees for tiddlywink players? Yeah, I, two pounds. I 50. think really it's just around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> For playing tiddlywinks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're accusing you're accusing the footballers of cheating, yes? Yeah. yeah. Now, what about in tiddlywinks? <laughs> do do we have in tiddlywinks dirty players? It happens quite often, which is why we've introduced new regulations regarding knee, elbow, and headgear. <laughs> 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 Tiddly wings, and in the same breath as we're discussing a serious sport like football. Yeah. Another question from our audience, uh, young gentleman over there. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to uh, to ask Paul. They're um, they're a fantastic Brazilian football player, Paul, mm. who can seemingly bend the ball around a wall at incredible angles. Yeah. Um, I'd like to ask you. Do you think it's possible for me to do the same? Like at tiddlywinks. Um, <laughs> you tiddle from the right, for example, on the side of the, of the wing. Very good question, yeah. Um, actually, <laughs> I'm a bit worried about Brazilians too, because uh, since the association introduced the one foreigner rule into the game, <laughs> we, you know, we're, we're having these imports that, that can just bend the tiddlywinks round the pot and back in again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, I have to say, Paul, that there seems to be a lot of skill in tiddlywinks. Maybe even so? more so than football, would yeah, you say? Definitely. Oh, yeah. come on. Def for I don't know how long you can have a serious spoken debate. And I'm, I'm discussing Tiddlywinks. <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm not. How many people turn up to watch a Tiddlywinks match? But it's about getting... two, two men and a dog. It's getting a big sport, you know. We're talking World Cups, yes? Yeah, the, the, last... World, the World Egg Cup, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we, we've covered the whole spectrum of, of various things in in your individual sports. I'd just like to finish tonight by asking you all, just in a, in a word or a phrase, what you really think of tiddlywinks. Asko, we'll start with you. Clean cut. Nothing like football. Football. Dirty game with rabbits digging tunnels. <laughs> Duncan. Outstanding, brilliant, world-class, super skills, sport for the future. Sport for the future. <laughs> Paul. I feel as though I've been insulted just being asked along here. I mean, I thought, I thought as I said, I'll say again, I thought this was going to be a serious sports debate. And th th this is just... Uh, and it's you, a don't, joke. you don't have a good word for tiddlywinks? <laughs> a good word for tiddlywinks? Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> well, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, now, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this evening. I hope you've enjoyed it from our panel, from myself. Good night. I was totally and utterly convinced that I was the best football player in Britain, that I had just been signed to Manchester United for £10 million and that basically no one could touch me. I believed in the situation completely and utterly. I felt that, that I was in the studio under hypnosis, I knew that, but at the same time I knew that I was World Tiddlywinks champion. And all those things I said about the sponsorship deal and the, uh, the pads and everything, that was true. For General Assembler Angela Alders from Surrey, meeting Paul McKenna was something of a life-changing experience. If you were out with your partner, would either of you flirt with anybody else? No. No. Sleep. But when you wake up, you will, because you'll believe that you're both a happily married, honeymooning couple sitting in a hotel lounge here. When a woman introduces herself to you as Martine, you'll remember that she's your long-lost sweetheart. You'll remember that she always wanted to marry you, and now you've met her again, you'll want to marry her. So you'll want to put out gentle feelers. You, on the other hand, would be a very jealous, possessive wife. If another woman were to show any interest in your husband, you'd seethe with rage. <laughs> if a man introduces himself to you as John, you'll suddenly remember that he's your long-lost childhood sweetheart. Ready? Eyes open, wide awake. Yeah, I'm glad we chose this hotel, what do you think? Nice heart-shaped bed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God! Hello? It's Duncan, is it Duncan? It's Martine. Yeah, right, yeah, I remember you. Yeah, all... Um, do, do you uh, mind if I sit down? No, no, can I have a seat? Oh, hi. Hi, how are you doing? How are you? Hang on, Duncan. Yeah. Who's yeah. shaved? Can you go and get us a drink? No, I'm going to get you a drink. Who's shaved? Um, is this your mother or something? Um, what do you mean, my mum? Old enough? 
Well, I'll tell you that uh, me and Duncan have uh, been childhood sweethearts. I thought yeah, Duncan... Yeah, but I don't really care. He's yeah. my husband. We're on our honeymoon, so yeah, will you uh, get lost? Yeah, but excuse me, we always promised each other that uh, if we saw each other when we uh, grew a bit older that we'd get married, didn't we, Duncan? Yeah, it's a bit late yeah, now, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, darling, why don't you go, you know, get us a few drinks, eh? No, why don't you go and get myself? No, you stay okay. here. I'll tell you what I'll do. Wait, wait, you can get me one. Yeah, I'll get you one as well. And uh, I'll come back and uh, as long as you stay there, that's all that matters. Okay. You can go where you like for like it. Oh, don't mind going anywhere. Bye. Right. Don't know who she is. Oh yeah, sure. Does <laughs> that look like it? Yeah, um, yeah, I think I met her once at school or something. Oh what? Long lost lovers, are we? No, no. Don't look like it to me. <laughs> Didn't do that. You wouldn't like it if I'd done it, would you? <laughs> Duncan? Yeah, oh. I'll just put your one there if you don't mind. I think we've got a lot of catching up to do, haven't we? Yeah. Oi! Wait, eh? What? Listen, Listen look. it's me, not her. Excuse me, love, if you're getting bored, why don't you go for a swim or something, eh? Why don't you? And I'll drown you at the same time. <laughs> no, I'll tell you what, you're married to me, matey, not her. Don't worry about her. I'll tell you what. Me and you could be on the next flight to Mexico and be married by tomorrow lunchtime, what do you think? Go get divorced for me. Oh, for God's sake, just let him go, will you? You'll find oh, someone sure. else. She'll find someone else, she'll find someone else, won't she? Yeah, yeah but I've got what I want. <laughs> Why don't you go and find someone else? I'll tell you what. I'm going to go and get my things. Okay. I'll be back and we can be off and uh, meanwhile you two can decide uh, who's going to have what wedding presents. Okay, fine. Oi! You ain't going nowhere, matey. Have a drink. No, I don't want a drink. Because you end up wearing it. <laughs> Angela. Hello. John, from school. Yeah, I remember. Where have you been? Oh, I've been busy. I've got a business oh, now. I've been travelling the world. <laughs> oh, you're back. Fantastic. Thank you. Come on. Who's Hi. this? I'm a husband. Hi, Duncan. Take the court now. Get us a drink, lad. <laughs> Listen, to go back to Angela and I were childhood sweethearts. Yeah, you can go now, I don't want you. We shared more with <laughs> Have a seat, have a seat, Paul, sorry. Okay. It's okay. Go on, go and we're not cases. going to go anywhere. Go on. Listen, Angela, those bike sheds, the positions. <laughs> Holy God, I've missed you so much. You've still got the photos. I've got everything. They're all there. Listen, I've got a jet waiting. Do you want to come with me to Mexico? Yeah, I'll come. One minute. Oi. Go Can you just... Martine? <sighs> Excuse me. Listen, what are you doing this weekend? Um, nothing. Do you want to go with me to Mexico? Oh, John, those nights in Mexico. Do you want to drink? Oh, Martin. Yeah, Martin. Well. <laughs> <laughs> right, Duncan. Yeah, don't want to be with him anyway. Mm. <laughs> he was useless. Yeah. I had to show him all the positions anyway, didn't yeah. I? <laughs> hey, hey. My first thought when I woke up was, uh, I thought, oh dear, I'm married to someone I've never met. And that, that was very disconcerting. It seemed really real. I really did think I was on my honeymoon. Martine came in and I thought, oh look, it's Tiffany off EastEnders. And then, and then she said her name and I just went, uh-oh, here comes trouble. When John came on, I really thought he was my childhood sweetheart and I didn't give a damn then about Duncan. I just wanted to go with John and get married. There are many ways of curing phobias. Traditional means can take many months, but with hypnosis, the same result can be achieved in minutes. This can be pretty dramatic when you've had a lifetime fear, like Ross King's fear of heights. I was on holiday with my mum and dad in Blackpool. I'm walking up the pier, and I was about four, and everything was fine until my dad said, oh, look, you can see right through. And I looked down, and I just remember it was like someone had, you know, whacked you know, kicked me from back, I went, oh, oh, and that was it, and it's such a vivid memory. What's going through your mind right now? It's a very, very weird sensation. Getting that feeling again, you know where. Um, it, I'm not too bad when I've got this wall here, yeah. I can hold on to it. I'm not good with these windows, though. Whenever I have dreams, whenever I have nightmares, it's always about high places. It's always about either being there or, or falling off. Let's start the transcend by just looking up in front of and above you and concentrate your vision on one particular place. As Paul induces a hypnotic trance, Ross feels more and more comfortable. 
In this state, his unconscious mind is open to suggestion, and using the power of hypnosis, Paul is able to eliminate a fear that Ross thought he'd have to live with forever. Ross simply follows Paul's instructions, and soon he will awake feeling refreshed, relaxed, and alert, but he does not yet know that his phobia has been removed forever. How do you feel? Fine. <coughs> yes. <laughs> mm. Yeah. yeah. So when you look down through the cracks in the floorboards now, what's the difference? Well, there's no problem whatsoever. I can still remember how I felt, but I don't have that feeling now. It's, yeah. it's, it's amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Paul McKenna and Ross King. To see if Ross had truly conquered his fear of heights, Paul took him to Blackpool Tower Circus for the ultimate test, the high wire. All right. There's more hypnotic hilarity soon, but I'm just talking to you, Marion. When I wake you in the next few moments and you hear me say the words, stay tuned, you'll suddenly believe that you have to dash down to the front of the stage and tell all the people watching at home that they have to turn off because you've read in the newspapers how terrible hypnosis is and you're one of those <laughs> know-it-all people. You'll come up with all kinds of bizarre reasons why they shouldn't watch. Eyes open, wide awake, wakey-wakey, rise and shine. Well, there's plenty more fun coming very shortly, ladies and gentlemen, so stay tuned for that, won't you? Um, I'll see you He's no good! Turn off your television! He strips in front of people! <laughs> What's the problem? No, you're no good. Get off. Uh. <laughs> And as we go into the final part of the show, let's meet medical student Jolly and Walter, who couldn't believe his eyes when he met Paul. Jollyan, you having a good time this evening? Yes, I am. Do you believe in paranormal phenomena, mind over matter, you know, that no, sort of thing? No, not really, no. You're a bit sceptical? Yeah. OK, understandable. Sleep. When you wake up, though, you will be very sceptical. But you will also find that anything that's coloured red will appear invisible to you. So, for example, you'll think you've got a rather nifty see-through shirt on. <laughs> Anything that's red will be completely invisible. Eyes open, wide awake. So, do you believe in paranormal phenomena, psychokinesis, mind over matter? No. Do you think that I could have any special powers then? No. <laughs> <laughs> I can do some very interesting things, you know. Uh, do you like the jacket, by the way? Yeah. It's quite a nice jacket, isn't it? I can do some very interesting things. I can create a force field around my body. Would you like to see it? OK. OK, well, I'll tell you what. Walk towards me and see what happens. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon? Do you think that, uh, do you think it's a real force field? No, it's some, something up there or something, I don't Do you know, know, I can make people's hair stand on end as well. <laughs> do you believe me? You're doing something, I mean, something's happening. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, just, um, come over here for a moment. Let's, um, have a stroll over here. Now, I am going to, through using sheer willpower, I'm going to break that bond. <laughs> OK? 
Do you want to check that there's no wires or, you know, trap doors or anything underneath, anything above it? But, yeah, it's perfectly legitimate. Because yeah. I'm going to break this vase using the power of my mind. Do you believe me? No. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Concentrate, concentrate, concentrate your mind. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon? I don't know. Was there something underneath? Or... Well, you checked. You had a look. Thank God. <laughs> I tell you what, you've seen those tricks before, haven't you, with spoons? I can magnetise a spoon. See that? See that spoon there? Look, I can magnetise it to my head, look. <laughs> or I can magnetise it to you. <laughs> or back to me. <laughs> well, have a look. Have a go. Feel it. See. Well, see if you can magnetise it. Go on. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm going to bend this spoon. Do you believe I can do that? No, because it's... Oh. OK. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you check? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm gobsmacked. You are. <laughs> well, I tell you what, come over here. Because I'd like to show you something that no magician could do. <laughs> I'm going to walk in thin air. Now, you can see there are steps there and steps there. I'm going to walk in thin air from those steps over to those ones. Do you believe I can do that? No. You don't believe that? <laughs> Come here, now, look. Just check. Look, there's, there's no wires above me, is there? No. Right, OK. No wires here. Stand there and watch. OK. Watch, I'm going to go up the steps and I'm going to walk into thin air. Ready? You can do it. Come round here. Come on, up the steps. Now, do it gently. OK, now, get, get to the edge of the steps. I can't and do it. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> you just have to believe. <laughs> now, you've got to imagine that there's a plank, a, an invisible plank, a force field here, and just step onto it. Go on. <gasps> can you feel it? Yeah. <laughs> How are you supported? How does it feel? Hard. It feels hard. Well, I think you did very well. In fact, um, I think we should all give you a big hand. <laughs> cool looked normal to me. Uh, as I've seen on television, he had a red arm. And I didn't see any of that. I suppose the bit that shocked me the most was the glass, because it came out all over me and I just didn't understand it. But the bit that I couldn't explain to myself at the time was the force field. When he took his glove off, just saw his hand and the forearm and the upper arm was just missing. It was just the shoulder. I stood back and didn't really know what to say. Robin Waghorn is a computer consultant, but under hypnosis, he swapped his hard disk for a very different kind of drive. Robin, what do you think of those salesmen that try and sell you anything? Can't stand them. Yeah, so you'd never do anything like that? No, not at all. <laughs> Sleep. But when you wake up, you will, because you'll believe that you're an obsequious salesman in a luxury car showroom. You've been given today to sell this car over here, or you're out on your ear, so you'll say anything to sell that car. Eyes open, wide awake. Right. It's over here. As you can see, it's a rather beautiful car. Better give it a shine. Oh, look, here comes your next customer. <laughs> This is going to be the car we want or not, but you see, we're going to a royal garden party. Royal. Very, very special How occasion. How are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> do all salesmen do that when they come into your Absolutely. Well, with, with people like yourself, it's without question. Marvellous. Well, just to go back, see, a royal occasion mm -hmm. must have the right car. Mm -hmm. So I thought you might have something for me, really. Well, I mean, I think this is this is the car. You, you, I can see you're already comfortable with the car. It's next year's. I must admit, it's, it's early. Yeah. Next year's. Next car. year's car. It's early. It's the latest in automobile technology. <laughs> this is it's a secret car. I mean, but I've got my hands on it. I've got the one to sell, and it looks like you might be the person to buy it. And what do you think are the main things about it? I mean, how would you really sell it to me as to why I should buy it? I think it's a comfortable ride. It's uh, great air conditioning in, in the hot weather. <laughs> it's power steering. I mean, the latest in exterior. Power steering. Power steering. You need lots of power to turn this wheel. <laughs> it's, 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 
it's the uh, latest in exterior uh, horns on there. And what's so special about these horns? Oh, you, they can be heard from miles away. I mean, there's <laughs> no way someone's going to get in front of this car. <laughs> and as a point of interest, I mean, have any famous people owned this car before? That's very important, you know. Um, I, yeah, there, there have been a, a couple around, but they couldn't, they couldn't afford to run it, you see. That was a oh, problem. who was that? Um, that? That was um, Sean Connery. Sean Connery? Sean Connery. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't afford to run it? Uh, not so much couldn't afford it. It, it just wasn't his style, you know, not the Bond thing. I don't know, it was, it was too loud for Bond, really. Too loud. <laughs> it might be right for me. Um, it's, it's not that loud. I mean, it's actually no, it's in the right circuit. So, it, look, would it be all right if we have a look? Of course, yes. Okay. I mean, and, I'm, and please, don't open the door, because my chauffeur always opens the door. Certainly, Is that all right? Certainly. Hawkins, please. Oh! <laughs> so, I've seen you discovered the, the, the Batmobile feature of the car. <laughs> that, that's... That's ridiculous. I mean, how would I manage, though? I mean, if, I was, if Hawkins wasn't around, for example, how would I manage with this? Oh, we can leave it off. It's not a problem. We can get Hawkins to take it off before you use the car and put it on when you finish. Uh, <laughs> I suppose that's fairly logical. And it's all right if I get in, because obviously I want to like to sit in it, you know? Absolutely. Just have to watch the tight skirt, of course. Now, you were saying this had power steering. That's right, yeah. <laughs> feature of the car. <laughs> um, this is stupid. Well, no, not, not at all, not at all. It's, it's, the, it's the power of thought over the car. <laughs> As I said, it's the latest in automobile technology. Um, equally, you can use that steering wheel to put on other vehicles you may own. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's your own personal steering wheel. Oh, my, well, I carry it around in my handbag. No, no, is that no, you, the sort you of can thing? Move it. You can get Hawkins to carry it for you. Hawkins. <laughs> a safety factor. A safety factor. Safety feature. Oh, I mean, I yes, again, I mean, with burglary and... Uh, you, you're certainly not going to get this car stolen when only your mind has the power to control it. But I wanted to get back on and work, OK? Now, listen, Hawkins, what about just trying the engine, OK? Oh, Crank it up. Let's have some ignition. Excuse, excuse me, I'm sorry. Could you just come and show me the ignition? Just, I mean, wh wh where do you do it? I don't um, see a key. Well, you, you think, again, you think. You, 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 you think? You think and flick the switch. Ah! <laughs> you, you, you may Noisy. Want well, it's the wrong thought. The wrong thought. <laughs> It's a bit dodgy to me, I'll tell you. Will you crank it, please? Yes. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I mean, look. I it's... mean, this is just a nonsense. I have to. Oh, no, 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 not at all. It's a it's, nonsense. It's 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 that it's a barbecue as well. You see. You, <laughs> you can lift the bonnet off of this, and you can you can have a, your, your royal gala barbecue. Well, I have to tell you, my man, you're doing a good job in trying to convince me, but I'm out of here. I, no, I look, no, you mustn't go. I tell you, you no, I no, came it's, in it's with the, good money. No, no, it's, 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 it's definitely the car for you. No, no, no you, you must. It's I the children. I've got no, plenty no. of children. No, you mustn't. <laughs> you no, no, no. houses I have to keep. I'm, it's, it's just. Well, I've got to buy the car. I'm just stunned by all of this, you know. Precisely. Imagine how anyone that you show this car to, how they'll be stunned. What a talking piece. Well, I don't know. The thing is that I'll have to sit in the back. So, Hawkins, do you mind having a look at that? You'd like me to try the back? Yeah, who, who's been in the back of this car, do you? A very small person, I'd imagine. <laughs> do you mind getting in? There's not a lot of room, Mum. <coughs> There's not a lot of room. Lot of room. As I say, it's meant for a small person, poss possibly, you know, small. What, like Paul Daniels or somebody? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Something like yeah. that. I don't know, what, what does it feel yeah, like? It's quite comfortable, isn't <laughs> it? Not a lot of room. <laughs> oh, you can see the traffic a lot further along. <laughs> And then you shout your instruction down to the driver, which would be you, of course. I can't. Yeah, excuse me, how's it going to drive from up there? Can't reach the pedals. We, we do arm extensions. We do long arm extensions. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous enough. I don't know that I'm impressed by the back. It looks very, very small. Well, yes, yeah, nice for those, those intimate moments. Well, how, how intimate do you reckon? Well, I'd, I'd say extremely intimate, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> to get the, the intimate moments over with quickly. I tell you what, you've made a very, very good effort and you've dusted this all day, but you know you can take this duster and, quite frankly, you can just... You want to buy the duster? Whatever you want. You like to buy the duster? Well, actually, the duster works better than the car does. <laughs> no, I actually... No, you, you must buy this car. I come with the it's car. It's a royal occasion. I come with the car. <laughs> you come with I come with the car. <laughs> Royal Man. 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 Splendid little jam jar. Oh, wonderful car, isn't it? <laughs>
think I'll take it. Excuse me, but actually, Thank I you was. No, I was here first. <laughs> man. So, listen, you don't want to try and send this to me. Excuse me. Even though it, it was small, it's still in my head. This, you know, this is a state-of-the-art vehicle. This, this is the car to own. You know, we're all going to want this. And the way it, bits came off it were just um, contrary to all of that. And it's, it, but yet, this car is the car to have. You know, the, everyone's going to want this. That they're going to want doors to fall off. They're going to want the back to fall out. They're going to want the seat to go high because that's what everyone wants. You feel as if you're looking in on the situation, and you, you know the reality behind it all, but. When you're there at that moment, it, it's real. It is, it's definitely real. Well, that's nearly the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen, but when you hear me say the words good night, Abby, you'll suddenly believe that the audience have only just arrived. You'll leap up and ask them what on earth they're all doing here so late. You'll tell them about all the fantastic things that they've missed. You'll be so excited about it. Everyone now, ready, eyes open, wide awake. Well, that's just about it. We're nearly at the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. All that remains is for me to thank my special guests, tonight's volunteers, and, of course, you for watching. Please join us again next time. Good night! Hey, 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 what are you doing? You missed it all! You missed all the it! Oh, no, I don't believe you missed... Oh, you should have seen it. There was this guy in the car. He was going up and down in the air. And then there was the couples. They were on the floor. They were all canoodling. And then that big bird with the big gold, you know, she came in. And then... Oh, yeah. Oh, you don't tell me you missed through the cat flap. <laughs> it's horrible house. Oh, I mean, I mean, you wouldn't even have dogs living in this house. And, the dogs were in the and it was his house. Can you believe this? St. <laughs> <laughs> what's his name? He was sitting down there and there was a black plane tiddly wink. And there was another one who thought it was really cocky football. Right? <laughs> and there was this other woman. She was like, you know, a reporter. And she was like saying, oh, you were cracking all this and talking about rabbits. <laughs> rabbits and football?